So hi guys, I am actually pretty nervous today because I'm going to be um, interviewing the Malaysia's famous host, moderator, uh, radio presenter Freda Liu and we're on the way to the house. It's actually very overwhelming to be interviewing her. I myself as a host, I want to learn a lot of things from her and today is the day where I want to ask a lot of questions so that I can get to know her life, her experience a bit more. So I'm ready, uh, wish me luck and let's go. <laughs> okay, then we go in. Yes, we oh, go in. Like that, huh? Okay, mine is set. Okay. She's definitely an inspiration for everyone who's growing to be successful in the media industry. She started as an English news reader in RTM and then she moved on to public relations and then she was a regional PR manager for 13 years for a renowned company. For 10 years, she is the lead producer and presenter at BFM 89.9 radio station. She is an epitome of constant learning. She is an MC, moderator, motivational speaker, radio presenter as well as an author. You can say that she is one tough and talented lady who has so much of experiences and struggles to share with us. Today is all about what she has got to say to the youngsters out there and what we as the young would like to learn from her. Like I was mentioning, I did introduce a little bit about you. Mm. And uh, first of all, hi Freda. Hi, <laughs> we're very color coordinated. Yes. You look at my dress, you see that there is a black goldfish there. So. Red and black. Black and red. Mm. <laughs> okay. Thank you so much for agreeing to talk to me to have a chat with me. And I'm very, very excited to get to know more about you. Thank you for inviting. My pleasure. Okay. I, as I was mentioning, as a youngster, as a Gen Y, I'm looking forward to know your struggles, your experiences of becoming a host, uh, a personnel in the, in the media industry. So I think to begin with, maybe you can uh, you know, start sharing some of the things that you have gone through, some of the decisions that you have taken in the early days of your life that, that flowed things perfectly that okay. you are here today. <laughs> Is it perfectly? Uh, sometimes <laughs> some things just happen when I came out to KL, right? Mm -hmm. When I came out to KL to study after finishing a business degree in marketing, I decided I wanted to go into public relations because at the time it was a fairly new industry. From from Sarawak? You from came Sarawak. Uh, I came to KL to study first. Mm -hmm. Um, I did a training program, uh, so it's about business degree, two years in KL, one year in Australia. Mm -hmm. um, and then during that period in Australia, I did one course, uh, one subject in public relations and I loved it. Because I was also a part-time TV uh, news reader mm -hmm. uh, uh, and radio news reader. Mm -hmm. And how I got into that was, was an accident as mm -hmm. well. I tell you, things happen for the strangest reason. I went back to Kuching after graduating to take care of my father mm -hmm. um, and during that period of a friend of mine said, hey, there's this uh, TV show in Kuching that they wanted to do. And I'm like, oh, okay, whatever, you know. But I was taking care of my father, so I said, I can't do this. Mm -hmm. My father then passed away. It was a couple of months later that my friend said, hey, there's this TV show in Kuching. I'm like, <laughs> what? So long already, what is this show? And I met up with the producer of the mm -hmm. show, and we were just talking. I had no idea. It wasn't even an audition. Mm -hmm. He said, oh, okay, you got the job. I'm like, yeah, okay, fine, whatever, <laughs> right? I was in the middle of, uh, you know, just finishing, uh, taking care of my dad, mm -hmm. and just resting for a bit. About How old were you at that time? Mm, I was 22. Okay, so at that time, so I wasn't too sure what I wanted to do, and I, was, and I asked my mom, uh, I said, okay, I said, yeah, just go and go for it. And I was like, what could a show in Kuching be about, right? Mm -hmm. It must be some small show, whatever. This is not a career path that I wanted to take. Mm -hmm. uh, it was interesting, but then it turned out to be a live TV show. Mm -hmm. Uh, and I was like, what? My first time on TV? And the thing is, at that time, uh, this was uh, life before Astro, right? Mm -hmm. So people actually watch TV TV, right? Yeah. Um, from, from there, I met um, uh, uh, Inche Saleh Pate Ahir, uh, the, the late Inche Saleh. Mm -hmm. I think he was the, uh, one of the, the DG at RTM. Mm -hmm. I, I could have gotten his title wrong. And he offered me a role to mm -hmm. do a part-time newsreader when I came up to KL. Mm -hmm. I enjoyed it, but I never thought of it as a career. Subsequently, of course, I went to work for uh, M uh, an MNC called IBM mm -hmm. and I was there for also many years. All this while still having this part-time job until mm -hmm. I guess BFM came along. And why I was so intrigued about BFM was that it was a talk show it was a t uh, and it was business mm -hmm. and it felt relevant, it felt needed. 
um, it wasn't just we have great music but it wasn't just music but it was conversation mm -hmm. and I'm still learning right everything made sense right the fact that I've been corporate the fact that I've got broadcasting experience mm -hmm. uh, it made sense mm -hmm. and uh, um, I know it sounds so simple mm -hmm. but when I did all these things full-time part-time I didn't know there was a station called BFM mm -hmm. right but I've always loved radio mm -hmm. growing up I've always loved radio because I find it such an engaging medium that was that was 11 that was, years ago yeah, yeah.